Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here, and today is episode number 19, and we are going to be talking about five causes of low TRH and how it impacts thyroid function. And we're actually going to be talking about TSH and TRH, um, so if you're not familiar with those, don't worry, we'll talk a little bit about those, and we'll talk about also why TRH is important for your thyroid function in general, and, and um, how problems with TRH may manifest as uh, certain thyroid lab patterns and why some of those may be missed. So let's jump right in. First of all, I want to talk about some basics of, of TRH so that you have an understanding of what it is. So TRH stands for thyroid, thyrotropin releasing hormone. And TRH is secreted from your hypothalamus in your brain and it travels from your hypothalamus to the pituitary, which is really close, and it TRH stimulates the release of TSH. And then you probably know that TSH then goes down and influences your thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormone. So there are three, th three main sort of um, areas in your body that can become impacted, which may then cause problems with your thyroid. The first is TRH, the second is TSH, and the third is your thyroid gland. Now, most people, and you're probably familiar with TSH, and that's usually what most doctors check, right? Because as TSH increases, that's a sign that your body isn't able to produce, um, or, well, really, it's a sign that your thyroid gland is not as responsive to thyroid hormone. And so high TSH generally is correlated with hypothyroidism. But what if your problem was not in your pituitary or in your thyroid gland, but it was in your hypothalamus? Because what can happen is if your TRH doesn't, proper, if you don't have enough TRH, then your TSH will be low or normal, which may make it look like you have normal thyroid function, and then therefore standard tests such as TSH and thyroid hormones might be missed. Okay, so that's one of the big issues. Now, you might say, well, how, how common is TRH, TRH dysregulation? And I would say to you, it's probably more common than you think, because we're going to talk about five causes or five reasons that it might be dysregulated. So to wrap that up, TRH dysregulation is probably fairly common, at least some element of TRH dysregulation. I think it occurs in a lot of people. Um, it's not, it's not, may not be the main factor of thyroid dysfunction, but it certainly is a contributing factor in a lot of people. So TRH problems may cause TSH problems, and that may be manifested as low thyroid hormones. So let's talk about some of these patterns. So this is the traditional pattern of hypothyroidism testing. High TRH, right, because there's also a high TSH and there's low thyroid hormones. So the high TSH occurs because your thyroid isn't responding. So if you look at just these two things, your, your TSH and your thyroid hormones, you might find a high TSH, which you diagnose as hypothyroidism, associated with low thyroid hormones. So this is the standard pattern. Now, most doctors don't check TRH, but if they did, it would be high in this sort of uh, standard pattern. But let's talk about what can also happen, which is a less conventional um, approach. So, or a less conventional a reason for a thyroid dysfunction. So you might have low TSH and low thyroid hormones, or even low normal TSH and low thyroid hormones, but you're still presenting with the symptoms such as fatigue and constipation and weight gain and uh, all those issues that are associated with hypothyroidism. Now, if you did this and you went to your doctor and you just said, hey, I'm feeling crummy, please check my thyroid, and they do, and they say, sorry, your thyroid is normal, they might miss it because they're not ordering the TRH. So the TRH completes this picture. Hopefully this is making sense. So if you have, if you, if you just looked at your TSH and you found that it was low or normal, and you looked at your thyroid hormones, which are in the normal range, but they're in the lowish range, that, that may be mistaken as normal thyroid hormone because you're not looking at the full picture, which is that low TR, TRH. So that's why this is important. Okay. If you, if you don't look at or even think about the TRH, then you might be missing a lot of, re, a lot of, uh, less known or uh, not as common causes of hypothyroidism. So let's talk about some factors that might impact your body's ability to produce TRH. So the first is high stress or high cortisol. So this is actually why I think a lot of people have TRH dysregulation, probably more than they think. Because think about stress. First of all, we know that stress comes from your social environment. It comes from um, your physical environment, which might be exercise. It comes from your emotional environment, which could be a lot of different things relating to grief or depression or anything like that. It also comes from just daily life, um, getting stuck in traffic, pressures about money, money or finances, all those things. They all are, they all cause stress on your body. And then of course, lack of sleep. So these, all of these things have been shown 
And by the way, let me let me say something real fast here. So whenever I make a a comment or an assertion, I always um, qualify that with a link to a a study to kind of prove the point here. So if you if you look on my on my website and you see in parentheses like a, a number here, that means it's a link to a a um, to a resource. So for instance, I'm telling you that stress and high cortisol are associated with TRH dysregulation. This is a study that shows that. Okay, so that's that's what this means. So if you want to look, you can. But stress and high cortisol absolutely impact your ability to have uh, to produce normal amounts of TRH. Okay, number two, and by the way, stress is very common. And this one I think is even more common. Number two, dieting and starvation, or any calorie restricted diets. So it's well known that the starvation mode that your body goes into if you're not consuming enough calories causes TRH and TRH dysregulation, which then manifests as thyroid problems. Okay, and and this is why so many people who are obese have thyroid dysfunction. It has to do with the TRH regulation, the TSH regulation, and then also thyroid hormone and thyroid conversion in general. But what we know is that even a consistent and small amount of caloric deprivation, such as let's say you drop down to 1,000 calories for as few as 21 days, that's enough time to impact your TRH and to reduce the amount of thyroid hormone that your body produces. Now, the problem with this is that this persists for years afterwards. So let's say you do that, you go on a diet, you lose some weight, you damage your metabolism in the process, you regain all that weight back because that's what happens 99% of the time, and then you hope that your, your metabolism will rebound. Well, it will, but it might take somewhere between 6 and 10 years to do that. So you want to avoid that at all costs. Don't, don't um, starve yourself, otherwise you'll be in a, a big problem or a big situation. This should be number three. Uh, by the way. And number three is another factor that can influence CRH is inflammation. And I'm talking about inflammation of any kind. So this could be from gut dysfunction. This could be from chronic pain. Um, this could be from an illness. I mean, it could be from anything. So just generalize, generalized inflammation can impact TRH and your thyroid. And you can check for uh, inflammation just by looking for basic markers such as CRP and ESR. So CRP stands for C-reactive protein and ESR stands for erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So these things are, they just give you an idea if you have inflammation in your body. But if you do, then there's a good chance that there's some, some degree of TRH dysregulation there. Number four, leptin resistance. We've talked about this a lot. Leptin resistance kind of occurs as a result of obesity, but also because of dieting and calorie restriction and a number of other factors. But when you have leptin resistance, leptin feedback feeds back to the hypothalamus and tells your body that it's in a, uh, uh, like a state of starvation, even though it isn't, and you have a ton of extra fat on your body. So this kind of leptin itself, especially when there's leptin resistance, causes issues with the TRH, and it causes your body to sort of mess up the way that it looks at what's actually happening in, in the environment in your body. And you can, you can easily check for leptin resistance just by ordering a fasting serum leptin. And then, of course, the last one, number five, would be medication. So specifically, well, chemotherapy being one, but that's not as common as I would say the use of steroids are. So steroids are used to treat autoimmune diseases, to treat inflammatory problems such as arthritis, just even degenerative arthritis, but also rheumatoid arthritis and all other autoimmune diseases. Steroids are actually fairly common. And steroids themselves directly feed back and interfere with TRH. So the moral of the story is, if you have normal thyroid lab tests and even a low to normal TSH and have low, low to normal thyroid hormones, your problem may still be hypothyroidism, but it's not caused by the thyroid gland. And in order to diagnose it, you may have to look at the TRH. And you can do that just by simple tests. And so you need to at least have this in the back of your mind because there's a lot of you out there who are trying to find someone to diagnose your problem and it might be looking at you, you know, staring you right in the face and it might be because of um, this, um, TR it might be because of this whole thyroid system, which is TRH, TSH, and the thyroid hormones. So the, so the, whole, the whole point here is to don't look at just one system in isolation, look at the whole thing because that will give you a better understanding of what is happening in your body. So that's pretty much it uh, for this, for this uh, episode about TRH which is, again, thyroid thyrotropin-releasing hormone. If you have any questions about TRH, how to test for it or whatever, what kind of symptoms you may have, please leave them below, and I will do my best to answer those. Um, but otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one.